but God bless you. Good morning. Blessings and abundance and welcome to the Way Life Center's Love Stream Sunday morning broadcast with yours truly, Apostle Kerry Pope. And it's indeed a blessing to be with you on this first Sunday of November. So much has taken place since we last spoken. A new president has been elected. We have a country that is trying to heal and have a message today that I believe will truly bless you. I'm so happy to have you with us. It is always a blessing to be here, you know, on behalf of myself and Rebecca and the Way Life Center. We love you much. and We just thank God for the opportunity to bring a message to you every Sunday morning. And this one this morning is one that's really dear to my heart. It's okay to let go. And I promise you, if you really, really be honest with yourself, as we're going to the end of the year, we're seeing so many things has transpired from the beginning of January to even right now, right here in November. But so many great things are going to happen. We just have to stay focused, okay? Uh, this is actually the second Sunday. Excuse me, I said the first, but it's the second Sunday of November. And so we're moving on quickly. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. But I want to give you this message this morning. And I pray that you're ready for it. So let's get right into it. Let's go straight to the scripture text. Found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 1 and verse 11. So give you time to get that right now. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse 1 and verse 11. So many of you have been saying, Carrie, your word has been blessing me Sunday after Sunday. And I pray this message today helps you tremendously because I tell you, when God gave it to me, it truly blessed me. So let's read. There is a time for everything and a season for which every activity under the heavens. If we look at verse 11, because of all the activities God has made, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Today's message is titled, It's Okay to Let Go. So how is this message going to bless you today? Well, if you look outside, you'll notice that the leaves are changing. We went through uh, January through March where there was no leaves on the tree. The trees were bared. That was winter. Then spring started to sprout in the end of March on until May. Leaves started coming out on the trees. Green grass was growing. Birds were chirping. We started to smell springtime and, and with that came new life. Then we went through the dog days of summer between June and early September, where it was just scorching hot. I don't know about where you live, but here in Georgia, it was hot. But now we find ourselves in the month of autumn, or fall. If you look outside, you'll notice that the trees have started changing colors. Where the tree was once yellow, uh, green, now you're seeing yellow and orange and red, various colors. What does this signify? Well, it signifies death. Well, Carrie, how is this, it's okay to let go, kind of bless me when you're talking about death. God has designed trees, and let's talk about a tree today. To when the tree grows, it has limbs, and these limbs produce leaves. And as these leaves are green, they supply shelter. They supply um, us to be able to go underneath it when it's hot and block us the sun from, from coming upon us. But as winter starts to approach, fall comes between summer and winter. And what happens is the leaves go through a chemical breakdown or a process of where it's no longer receiving the nutrients to keep it green. And so it's slowly dying. Now, many people, uh, I was just a couple weeks ago, actually, yeah, two weeks ago, I was in, um, I was up in Asheville, North Carolina. And if you've never been there before, it's a place that you really want to visit this time of year. And so as I'm going to Asheville, I'm looking at the leaves and the beautiful colors and how you can smell the crisp air, but you can look at the trees and see the various colors and how even the forest was just giving God praise even as the leaves were dying. Carrie, why is this so vital? Because some of you right now have things in your life that are dying, relationships, you may have some loved ones, you may have a career, Whatever it is, you're going through a process of it's being over. And one of the things that I have come to understand in my years of living, from pastoring to going through a divorce, uh, divorces rather, I've been multiple, I'm not proud of it, but that's what I've gone through. And 
looking at the things I've gained but also lost, I look at where I'm at today and I have no sad testimony to give you. In spite of all that I've gone through, in spite of all that I've lost, what I've come to understand that it's okay to let go of that which has served its purpose. You, you got to hear me this morning. So many of you are, are, are crying over what you've lost versus understand that if it was still meant to be in my life, it would still have validity and serve purpose. But it has served its purpose, past tense, and I got to let it go. You, you know, some of you are saying, well, had I done this or had I did that or had I not made this choice, then I wouldn't, it would it, still be alive. Not necessarily. See, we got to learn how to give thanks in all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And one of the things that I want to talk about right now is the contrast of life. See, in Ecclesiastes, we begin to get an understanding of the various contrasts of life. Now, before I go there, let me give you this quote that I think is important. The trees are about to show us how lovely it is Look at that now. How lovely it is to let the dead things go. Oh my God. You, 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 you got to get there. Look at the various colors in those leaves and how beautiful they are. And the leaves are going to teach us and the trees are going to teach us through the releasing of the leaves. How lovely, not how sad or how bitter, but how actually lovely it is to let the dead things go. My God, what are you saying, Carrie? I'm saying that if we ever pay attention to nature and become you know, in tune with nature, then we'll understand that it's okay to let dead things go. So how is it then that the tree can, without any effort, just let leaves go? And you know what's, what's, what's unique, and I want you to hear this this morning. When a tree is standing out there with a new set of leaves that comes in the springtime and it blossoms in the summer, that tree understands the process of letting go because it knows that a season is coming to where I got to release the very thing that has been protecting or covering and make me look good. But the tree is not worried, brothers and sisters, because it understands that there's another set of reproduction that's coming, that this is not the end. The tree understands that I'm going to go through a season of nakedness, but inside of me is growth. And inside of me is reproduction of another set of leaves. And not, listen now, not the same amount that I lost, but actually more. Oh, come on, Kerry, what are you saying? See, as the tree continues to grow, it also extends limbs, but also in the extension of the limbs, other leaves take place and grow, not only replacing the leaves that were lost, but adding new leaves. Somebody better hear me. You've been crying over what you've lost. Let's look at the contrast of time. This is what's in Ecclesiastes when it says, uh, there's a time and a season and a purpose to everything under the heavens. And then it goes into the various things, as I've called them now, the contrast of time. This is so vital because in our lives, there is a time to be born. And we celebrate birth, but there's also a time to die. Can we talk about that for a moment? You know, I know that nobody wants to, to, to celebrate death. We celebrate birth. No, someone's pregnant, we, we have the baby, it's a boy, it's a girl, it's twins, it's triplets, or whatever it be, and we give out cigars, or we have a, 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 a birth party, or a sex party, where we determine what the sex of the child is. But when a person dies, we cry and we feel depressed. And if you really study the Word of God, it's backwards. The Word of God tells us to cry when we're born and rejoice when we die. You know, whether you live to be one years old or a hundred years old, every day that God gives you on this earth is a blessing. And when God calls someone home, we are supposed to rejoice. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. That's the contrast of life. Let's look at some more. There's a time to plant and there's a time to uproot. Some of you are so concerned about planning things, but there's a time you got to pull up what you, you know, you got to uproot yourself. You got to sometimes move to another company, move to another city, 
move to another area. You have to uproot. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time to tear down and there's a time to build up. You got to know when it's time that, 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 that this house has served its purpose and tear it down, but build a new house. But don't be that person the Bible talked about. Uh, well, a foolish woman tear down her house with her own hands, but a wise woman build her house. I like this one right here. There's a time to weep and there is a time to laugh. I want to pause there for a second because so many of us have gotten this confused. Some of you are weeping when you should be laughing and you're laughing when you should be weeping. You've got the contrast of time switched. What are you saying, Carrie? When something good is going on in your life, rejoice in it. Many of you watching me right now, and I'm just going to tap into what God is showing me. Many of you right now are afraid to rejoice because you're afraid to get happy because you're afraid God is somehow it's going to mess up. And I don't want to put all my eggs in this basket and be, and, 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 and be happy. Wait a minute. There's a time to, to laugh. There's a time to be happy when God has blessed you, when God has worked things out for you. Don't be afraid to, and hold on to this one blessing and afraid to enjoy it because you're afraid of losing it. Because if you understand the concept of time, you got to let go of some new th of some old things in order to receive some new things. See, some of you right now are going to carry, I'm afraid to, to laugh because I'm afraid that I'm laughing and nothing good is going to come out of me enjoying this. Oh, more good will come. See, let me tell you what I had to learn. I had to learn that you have to enjoy the blessing today because if God takes it away from you tomorrow, now is the time to weep. And it's okay to weep. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean that you don't trust God. It means you're going through the contrast of time. And you understand that I've laughed yesterday, but today is weeping. And there's nothing wrong with weeping. If you lost something, go through the process of grief and grieve properly. So that when God brings back around the time of laughter, you're not bitter. Oh, oh God, somebody hit me this morning. Some of you are very bitter right now. And God is ready to bless you, but in the process of blessing, you can't even enjoy it because you're still mad about what you lost. You got to know when to let it go. Today, let it go. A time to mourn and a time to dance. There are people that are in the street right now. Let's be honest. I'm not going to get Republican or Democratic on you, but I'm going to talk about America. We have just come through seeing senseless racism show its head again. And just because another president has been elected doesn't mean it's going to go away. But people are out in the streets today. They're yesterday were out when the, the announcement was made rejoicing, dancing, happy because they're saying that 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 whole heaviness of of, of racism and the heaviness of oppression and the heaviness of divided the decisiveness and dividing in, within the country. So today there's a little hope of a better tomorrow. And so they're dancing in the streets, dancing that America has just uh, nominated and elected the first African-American woman. Not just a woman, but African-American who's African and Asian descent. That, that now we're seeing the people of color standing in an important position in America. That's a blessing. It's not about Democratic or Republican. It's about America. And so there's a time to mourn, but there's also a time to dance. And people are celebrating. And it's not about what side won. If you're America, we all have to win. Because divided we stand, together we stand and divided we fall. And I'm tired of seeing our country fall. A time to scatter stones. And a time to gather them. That's important. That's important. Can I, can I tell you why it's important? There's a time where things are scattered. And, and, and some of you have been in families where your families have been scattered through situations and adversity. But then there's a time to gather those stones together. You know, it's a time to bring the family back together. I want to speak to your family this morning that has went through hell and has been divided because of it. It's time to gather back up the stones. Now it's time to bring it back together. It's time to bring the family structure back together. 
Not to come back and point fingers and say, oh, had you not did this or had he not done that. No. Come together in unity and forgive each other. It's time to let go of what he did to you and what she said about you and how this happened. I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget. Well, I didn't ask you to forget, but I did ask you to forgive. Because sometimes we need to remember it so that we don't make those same mistakes. One of my favorite scriptures was in Galatians 6 and 1. If a brethren be overtaken in a fault, a brethren is overtaken in a fault. Ye which are spiritual. And what's, what's so unique about that word spiritual is because there's a lot of religious people who are condemning, but spiritual people are saying, I forgive. Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. Meaning, Gather them back together and restore them in the spirit of meekness. Least ye also be tempted. That's vital because so many people are holding grudges today. Oh, you knew what you were doing when you did that. But yet, you better be careful. Because you may be up today. But because of the contrast of time, you may be the very one tomorrow that has committed not just what the other person did, but worse. And you're going to need people to restore you. In the spirit of meekness. Come on, somebody. Contrast of time. We got to get this today. A time to embrace. And a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time that you got to go your separate ways. And let me go there for a second. I want to I pause for the cause. If you have had a heated situation. Let me talk to, to married couples for a moment. Of those in, in, in romantic relationships. That's a time to embrace, okay? That's a time to be lovey-dovey. But then there's a time to refrain from embracing so you can accomplish some things of individuality that God has for you, okay? You got to understand, that's, it's okay that we don't do some things together. Rebecca and I love each other. We, we embrace and, we, frame and we, we embrace so much, but there's sometimes we refrain from embracing so that I can accomplish what I need to accomplish and she can accomplish what she needs to accomplish, but it doesn't mean we hate each other. We just, and we just refrain from embracing so that we can accomplish some individual things of our lives. Okay, I want you to hear this morning because there's going to be a time when your mate may say, I need some me time. Rebecca just last week was burned out, needed a break, needed to get to herself and get with God. Times I've had to get by myself and get with God, refrain from embracing. Okay, there's nothing wrong with you taking some me time and I encourage you. OK, I encourage you today to take some me time, because if you don't, you are going to burn out. And if you're not any good for yourself, you're definitely not going to be any good for your family. Can I get an amen? So let's keep going. I love this right here. There's a time to search. And that's a time to give up. Let me talk about that for a second. That's a time to search. And there is a time to give up. Some of you have been searching for how, you know, to be better in a relationship, how to be a better lover, a better provider, a be, uh, to be more understanding. But there may be a person that you're linked to right now that is not understandable. OK, it's time for you to stop trying to get answers. Sometimes you just have to say it just didn't work. I'm, t I'm talking to you. Yes, daughter, I'm talking to you right now. You said, oh, my God. You're, you're, you're saying, well, I, I thought if I lost weight, I, I thought if I made my hair look this way, I thought if I wore these kind of clothes, I thought if I became more seductive, he'll, he'll love me. He couldn't love you because he couldn't love himself. And how can he love you and appreciate you if he hasn't done the work to love himself first? So you got to stop seeking answers and say, wait a minute, the answer is he couldn't love me. He couldn't be what I needed him to be for me because he couldn't be what he needed to be for himself. See, I'm saying it for a female because God is, is showing me this. A young lady I'm talking to right now. You can comment and say, that's me. But you've been asking, what's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. Okay? It's just the time to come to the conclusion that he was not for me. Hmm. Brothers. You got to do the same thing. She was not for me. You don't have to sit here and keep wondering what's wrong with you. Two good people can come together but not be good for each other. And when you do that, you're saying, well, evidently something wrong. And no, there's nothing wrong with you. You are not supposed to be with him 
he was not supposed to be with you. So for that reason, stop searching for the answer and accept the fact it was not meant to be. I know it's not easy to hear. And somebody right now is on the cups of making a decision, a cup. So making a, you, you, you're saying, well, I'm, 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 I got some choices to make. Do I stay? Do I go? Do I just give him room or give her room? You already know the answer. Some of you are prolonging the inevitable, which is it's not going to work. It wasn't meant to work. I tried to make it work because of my pride and my ego. But the reality is it was never meant to be. You know, this, when, I've done, when I do weddings, and I've done many of them, and I, I always say at the end, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Okay? But the key of what I said that many don't hear is what God has joined together. Okay? Because a lot of these relationships, and I'm going to stay here for a second, a lot of these relationships are not joined together or called together by God. You have invoked the presence of God into the relationship, but God didn't join it together. Because here's the thing, when God joins something together, it will stand the test of time. It will endure hardship because God knew when he pulled you together what it took to keep it together. My God. But when you come together out of because it's a, a arm charm, okay, arm charm means you put on your arm and you look good or a trophy wife, you're going to find out that when the wind starts to blow like it's doing in fall and the leaves start to rattle, that it will not stand the test of time. One of my favorite songs of always, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you just a little bit of it, is Can You Stand the Rain? You know New Edition. It asks the question. Because so many people love love, but do you love what God has joined you to? There's going to be some days you would not like the person that God joined you to. There's some days Rebecca gets on my last nerve and I get on hers. But I love her. And can you stand the rain? My God, I'm going to preach that one day. I'm gonna, I may do that soon. Can you stand the rain? Uh, let's go to the second one here. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Back into relationships, I want to go real quickly. Some of you right now are asking God to give you the next man or the next woman in your life. You want to be in a, a committed relationship. You want to be happy. But you're holding on to some things of your past. Some of you have some rings, some jewelry, some clothing, some items in your home right now. And you're going, it's valuable. I'm not getting rid of it. But what you're holding on to still has a spirit attached to your past. And, oh, I know you're like, come on, Carrie, you, you, you're messing with me right now. You, you're holding on to something from your past because it has financial value. But do you understand the spiritual deficit that has placed you in? There's a time to keep, but there's a time to throw away. There are some things that God is telling you to get out of your home because of the spirit of your past that is attached to it. But you're trying to say it has sentimental value. It has financial value. Do you know how much this costs? This is Versace. This is Gucci. I don't care if it's Lucci. Get rid of it because it's holding you in a state of time. And you cannot go to the next or produce greater if you're still holding on to what has served its time. It's okay to let it go. My goodness. I hear you, God. A time to tear and a time to mend. Now this next one is vital. A time to be silent and a time to speak. Ooh, this is gonna get real good. Some, somebody right now needs to speak, but you're being silent because you don't wanna seem petty. You don't wanna seem like you're being uh, 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 petty Betty, let's just say that. And you, there's a situation and things around you that keeps happening. Excuse me. It's almost like you become a doormat. And people are wiping their feet on you because you're not saying anything. How does it look for me to stand in the elevator and you're standing on my toe, but I don't want to say anything because I don't want to seem like I'm weak. Baby, let me say something to you. If something is hurting you, if something is bothering you, you better open up your mouth and speak. 
one of the things I've come to the understanding of, and I've said it many times, I used to be that kind of guy that said, my name is Bennett, I ain't in it. And I let my silence be just to kind of be the forefront for me. Well, in doing that, what I actually was doing was actually speaking loud and actually agreeing to the very thing I was being silent to. So, fast forward now. I've learned this. I tell people exactly how I feel. A lot of people that used to be with me, they're no longer with me. A lot of people that used to um, used to say, my God, Apostle Pope this and Apostle Pope that, are not saying it anymore because I made a choice to speak my truth versus be silent and go along just to get along. Can I get an amen? I would rather you speak your truth to me and stand on what you believe in than to be fake and phony and just go along because you don't want to rock the boat. Come on now. Let's be honest. I respect you for your honesty and your truth and your perception of how you view things versus just going along with what somebody says, but behind closed doors, you're talking and speaking. No, 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 no. Say how you really feel. And what I've come to understand is, in this, and listen, at my age right now, I don't have time to be around superficial people who can't speak their truth. I may not like what you say, but I'm going to respect it because you spoke how you felt. If you, you know what's funny? People kept saying, America can't be that, cannot be that racist. But yet almost 50% of the country voted and have gone along with a lot of racist things. Now, I'm not saying anybody agree with Trump because of he was racist or whatever he may be. No, some agree with the principles of his economic plans and whatever, whatever. But a lot of people, truth came out about how they feel about people of color. And some people of color's feeling came out about how they feel about white people. Let's just keep it real. But at least now I know where you stand. If the N-word slips out of your mouth and you call me one after I finish whooping your butt, then I'm going to respect you for who you are. <laughs> a racist. Oh, you should have said, did he just say that? Yes, I did. Because I'm not going to sit here and let you say it to my face and think I'm not going to respond. I know how to slap you in the name of Jesus and slap you hard. Okay, I'm playing. I'm playing. Calm down, y'all sanctified religious people. Calm down. But I promise you I ain't going to turn the other cheek. I'm going to let you know how I feel. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with me getting you off of me if you say the wrong thing to me. God is, you know, being meek is not being weak. Don't get it twisted, baby. I don't let the smooth taste fool you. I know I look good, but I can get crazy quick because I've come to understand that I can love Jesus, but yet get you straight at the same time and still be holy. God never called us to let people walk all over us. Many of you right now need to open up your mouth and speak. I don't have to cuss you out to get you told. I don't have to do that. I don't have to cuss you out to get you straight now. I can get you straight now with some great words, intellectual words, that make you go home and look them up. Come on, Holy Ghost. I've said it for a reason. Many people think because you love God, you're supposed to take crap and take mess. No. And if I actually did say something I shouldn't say, God is just to forgive. But I'm sick of people thinking because you say, oh, I thought you were saved. Baby, I'm really saved. I'm good and saved and got the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues. I can prophesy heaven down, but I will get you told if you step at me the wrong way. I have learned in my years of living that you have to teach people how to treat you. Come on now. You are responsible to teach them how to treat you. If you let them walk over you and you turn the other cheek, you turn both these cheeks and both butt cheeks, they're going to keep walking over you. But I've learned that if you get people straight and you do it in a respectful manner, people will respect you because they, kind of, they have come to understand what? That there's a time to be silent and there's a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. One of the greatest songs I love and have loved for years is by uh, the Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers, the song, The Gambler. And I want to say this to you today when you understand the contrast of time. You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. Know when to walk away and know when to run. You never count. <laughs> you never count your money while you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough for counting. 
when the dealing's done. What is so unique about that song is this. When you understand when to hold them, there are some people you hold on to. But you got to know when to fold them. You got to know when your hand is not good with certain situations or people. And you got to know when to just fold them. You got to know when to walk away. You got to know when to walk away from situations. You got to know when to run. Because let me say something to someone. When you, when you remember the story of Joseph and, and Potiphar's wife was trying to grab Joseph because she was in, looking at him and lusting at him and Joseph ran. When you know that some things about your life and around your life is not good for you, you better know when to walk away, but you better also know when to put on your shoes and run. Some things you have to run from. When you know your past is coming at you and you're not over it, if you know that your flesh is just as tempting as the person that's coming after you, baby, you better run. You better not answer the phone. You better not get on YouTube. I'm not YouTube, but I, I'm going to be on YouTube now. FaceTime or Messenger. You better not accept some of these uh, POF dates or whatever it may be when you know that you're not strong enough. One of the classes I'm teaching this week is on, 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 on and this is actually, actually good, is talking about how you need to have in place protection or boundaries. And you better know that if you're not strong enough to deal with something, you better have boundaries in place to protect you. Some of you know that you're not past drinking or smoking weed and getting drunk. Some of you say, I can drink, but I don't know how to just drink. I get drunk. Some of you know that you know that you was a hustler back in the day and now times are getting hard and that hustling spirit is trying to come back on you. Baby, you better know when to run, run to help. Better know who to call on when you are struggling. I'm talking to somebody right now. You're hearing me loud and clear. You're not strong and you know it, so you better run. Never count your money while you're sitting at the table. Never say here and count your blessing when you're sitting around when the devil's trying to get you. Baby, you can count that later on. Right now, when you know the devil's after you, it's time to fight. It's time to fight the battle that's in front of you. And you can count all the other stuff later on when you get finished with the dealings of the, of the fight that's in front of you. So many people right now are battling life situations and circumstances. And you're trying to get holy and quote scriptures when you need to know how to fight spiritually. You better know that now is not the time to quote 15 scriptures. Now is the time to get on my face and call out to God and ask him to give me the strength I need to get through this. One of my favorite songs was, God, don't move this mountain, but give me the strength to climb. You hear me now? Give me the strength. God, don't move the mountains. Just give me the strength to climb. Because when he gives you the strength to climb, you better get to the top and say, I made it. You look back down where you came from and you'll see all the things that God has brought you through. You'll see all the hell that you've come through and you'll say, I made it. Not because he took me around the mountain or moved the mountain, because he gave me the strength to climb the mountain. Mm. Come on, somebody. I feel you, God. I love this quote. Mm. I feel you, God. Letting go. Letting go means to come to the realization that some people are not part. I'm, let me just start away. Letting go means to come to the realization that some people are a part of your history, but not a part of your destiny. Mm. I'm going to read that again. Letting go means to come to the realization. It means to stop faking the funk. It means to stop saying and lying to yourself. It stops saying, oh, God's going to make a way. No, it means to come to the realization that people, some people that you're holding fast to, some people that you've seen yourself walking down the aisle with, some people that you say God is giving you, some people are now part of your history. But they're not part of your destiny. I want you to think about people in your life that you thought will always be with that, be with you always at the end. You saw yourself making it to the top with them. I want you to think about where are they now? Think about it. I remember people that I uh, that I went through and I thought about over the last 20, 30 years of my life, you know, being married and divorced and married again and divorced. 
friends that I thought were friends that either died or they just stopped being friends and they backstabbed me. Associates that you thought would be good for business, but they actually were not good for business or they were good for the moment. But then when time went on, they had served their purpose and, and it was over. I've come to understand that they're part of my history. Why is history important? You know, when I was in school, I never liked history at the beginning. Because I'm saying to myself, why is history relevant to me? Why, why is it relevant to what I'm doing today? But it was only as I started beginning to understand history that I understand the future. See, history is a lesson of the past. It's a lesson of what happened once upon a time. And if we really pay attention to history, it can help you in your future. How? By not making the same mistakes that you made in your past again. By not giving your heart to fools and by not allowing two-faced people in your circle that show themselves, but you gave them the benefit of the doubt. See, history will teach you how to move forward with wisdom. History. And many of you say, I don't want to talk about my past. No, I didn't say talk about it, but I did say study it. Okay? Some of you are too busy talking and stuck in the moment, but learn about the past. Learn that there's some people who are only supposed to be part of your past, not part of your destiny. When you learn this lesson, you'll stop hating them and you'll start appreciating them. <laughs> I, I, yeah, you, you stop, you just, you stop wishing bad upon them and hoping that God will strike them dead with, with cerebral palsy or cancer or Luke. No, come on, baby, that's bitterness. When you learn your lessons in life and learn history, it'll give you a better appreciation for where you are today. Had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, tell me where would I be? See, I can look back at my past and. I could see like a tree, the leaves that served their purpose and have fallen to the ground and they've piled upon each other. And all of a sudden, a strong wind came along and now my, 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 my yard is full of leaves or memories. See, leaves are nothing but fallen memories. And what you have to do, watch this now, as you do with your lawn, is call somebody to come and retrieve and bag your past. You didn't, I don't see anybody running outside and saying, hold on, wait, 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 don't take my leaves, let them stay. No, no, baby, no, 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 you don't do that. You can't wait for the man who does the lawn, or maybe you do it yourself, to get out there with a leaf blower or to get out there with the rake and put them in a pile. Some of you burn your leaves. Some of your past need to burn. Burn, baby, burn. Some of you may, 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 may go out there and, and get your leaves and, and put them in a bag and put them on the curb for the trash man to come. But I've never seen people mourn over dead leaves. So why are you mourning today over past memories? Baby, let those memories burn. Let them come into a pile and become, your, you know, in a bag and put them on the pass and let the curve, on, on, on the curb, let the trash man get them. And then for a while, be okay with the tree being bare. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because what you don't understand is that tree is standing through the test of time. You are that tree. And you got to rest assured and understand and know that just as sure as the seasons change, and they are, just as sure as you went through spring and summer, not fall, and even winter's coming, know that growth is still happening in the process. As long as that tree is standing in the ground and standing upward, it's swaying and swaying back and forth with the wind, but it's not falling. The tree is getting taller. The tree is getting wider. The tree, which is you, my beloved, is actually growing. And as you grow, although you may be naked right now, you may not have a husband, may not have a wife, may not have a job, may not have the promise that God has promised you, but you're still standing and growing in spite of. And it's the simple fact that when my season comes back around, not only will I have grown with new leaves, I'll have grown in stature. My 
faith is stronger. My belief that God will make a way out of nowhere is stronger. My testimony now has more to testify about. You can't have a testimony without a test. And so now, thank you, God. Now I can say, without God, I can do nothing. He never left me nor forsook me. God has never forsaken me. He's, he's been there even when I didn't deserve him to be there for me. God has always been on Team Carrie when Team Carrie was not with Team God. Can I get a witness? You know I'm telling the truth. God never left you when you left him. When you get me, when, when, when there was doubt that, that, that just crept into your heart and, and it looked as though that you was going to take an L, yet you came out on top. Out of all, let me say this to you guys, and I can testify with, 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 with grace and power. Out of all the hell I've endured in my life and all the losses that I've encountered, I have always come out higher. I've always come out better. Not bitter, better. Switch that E or that I that you have in bitter to better. Put an E in there. Keep the I, keep the vowel, but switch the I to an E. Keep the B, the T, T, and the E, R, but instead of being bitter, be better. It made me better. And I can look at what God has done in my life. I can look at what he's given me. I can look at my status from financially to mentally to emotionally to socially to spiritually. And I see growth on every level. I remember when I used to sit back and say, God, how can you let this happen to me? And God said, you don't understand, boy, that I'm actually growing you in the middle of the mess. I'm growing you. I'm taking you to higher heights and deeper depths. And you over here tripping over what you've lost. Understand that the tree let go of the leaves without any effort because it wasn't worried about what it was losing because it's looking at what it's gaining when the next season come around. See, the tree is in tune with God. And we today need to become more in tune with God. I'm going to give that last quote to you one more time before we go into our offering. Letting go means to come to the realization, means to come to Jesus. We're, we're having a come to Jesus meeting this morning. Letting go means to come to the realization that some people are part of a history. They're part of your history, not part of your destiny. And I refuse to cry over the leaves that have fallen from the tree when I know that my destiny still awaits me. I know that new leaves are coming. I know that the talk shows are coming. I know that the auditoriums are coming. I know that me sitting and, and, and lecturing, you know, all these various great things that God is going to have the way Life Center and Rebecca and myself doing, they're yet to come. And how do I look crying over the leaves that are dead? You know, use it as compost. Make the leaves, grind them up and put them out on your fertilization and, and let it help grow what's coming. Instead of sitting here crying over what was, when yet what's to come is so much greater. My God, I feel God. Greater awaits you when you understand the contrast of time. And you understand there's a time and a season and a purpose to everything under the heavens. And that God has made everything beautiful in his time, even your losses, even the death. That's why the leaves, although they're dying, are beautiful because it's time for them to die even in death whenever god calls me home i want it to be beautiful i don't want it to be oh my god it was traumatic and it was tragedy no beautiful because if it's my time then he's made everything beautiful in his time some of you this morning have to come to a realization realization that it's over and not to have a pity party and say, God doesn't love me. No, he loves you enough for you to come to the realization that it is over. He loves you enough to send a message to the messenger this morning that it's okay to let go. It's okay to let it go. Whatever that it is, I, I know what it is for me and what it has been for me, but what is the it for you that is okay to let go? I love the illustration of the little, the, the picture of Jesus and this little girl. And this little girl is holding on to this tiny teddy bear. When behind Jesus' back is a larger teddy bear. Because she was afraid that if he takes it, he won't replace it with anything 
as a value. No, God never replaces it with the same value. He always gives you greater value. God always gives us greater value when he takes away something that we call value. I wish you would hear the man of God this morning. He always gives us greater when he takes away what we consider to be valuable. So this morning, as I get ready to pray, I want you to let it go. Know that as the leaves, without any effort, release the leaves. And sometimes you say, well, how could that relationship, that little lie was nothing. Well, sometimes the leaves, when the little wind goes, they let go because of nothing. The relationship broke, broke up or broke off or ended over nothing because it was dead. And it was dying for a long time. It didn't just die. It was dying for a while. And it finally lost the nutrients necessary to keep it in, uh, vital. The validity of the relationship ended. And with that being said, it's over. But baby, rejoice and thank God. Because it's part of your history and not your destiny. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this message. I thank you for how you've spoken so profoundly this morning. It's okay to let it go. And God, as I've spoken this morning, I, I pray that you allow the word to define in each individual listening what that it is that they have to let go of. Sometimes letting go of expectations is the it sometimes letting go of expectation of what we we want people to do and expectations of what we thought and how you would bless us but this morning god we release any expectations and we've come to the realization that it is your will for our life to have better not worse to prosper as our soul prospers but sometimes in prospering god we got to take a loss one of the favorite songs I love, sometimes we got to lose to win again. God, that song, I truly believe is powerful because sometimes we have to take an L in order to get a W. It's in the L, it's in the loss that we become humble. It's in the loss that we learn to trust you. It's in the loss that we learn that sometimes we place others before you and made them a God. You told us that you are a jealous God and you have no other God before you. So sometimes in taking the L is to bring to the realization that we made our loved ones gods. So this morning, we repent, Father, for being bitter. And we thank you for the word that's going to make us better. Bless the hearers of your word, not only just to be hearers to take, but to be doers as well. This we pray today. Amen. But God bless you. I hope and pray that that word has blessed you tremendously today. I hope and pray that you heard God speak so powerfully. No, I, that's not about Fantasia. Sometimes you got to lose to win again. I remember when my wife and I went with our, some loved ones to a concert of Fantasia. And she sang that song. And Rebecca and I bawled like two babies. Because I knew and I remember all the things that I had lost. And it made me grateful that I lost in order to, to win again. When you know that your life is a life and your destiny is a life and destiny that God has to be great, you'll learn to let go of that which has served its purpose. And you'll learn how to sometimes take an L in order to get that W. And I want to encourage you today to trust God. Okay? It may look bleak, it may look grim, it may look as though you just not going to, you know, it's just over. And it may just be. But you got to know that you're growing and, and on the other side of this L is wisdom and knowledge and understanding and trust. And better. Not bitter. Better. All right. So if you will, come on and help me raise an offering this morning. We want you to donate and partner with us. There's a link up right now. We're also going to put it in the comment section. Help support this movement of love, healing, and spiritual awakening. We want you to visit the website, which is PayPal. And you can sell through credit cards or through your debit card. And then also you can visit, visit uh, Cash App, Dollar Sign, The Way Life Center. 
and sow a seed this morning and partner with us. Partner with Rebecca and myself and the Way Life Center as we continue to bring content of such and greater. Bring to you what God has given us. And so I want you to go there, please, and go there now and donate. You, many of you have been doing that. That's why we're able to get the software that we use for the videos, the cameras, the background, the backdrops. Because we want to bring you the best in ministry, not just in word, but also in presentation. And so if you will visit right there, go to the website, https, semicolon, slash, slash, bit, dot, lys, forward slash, 2m6gunu. Or you can go right in the comment section, click that link, take you right to it. Or if you have Cash App, you can go Cash App at The Way Life Center, dollar sign, The Way Life Center. And anything that you give will be greatly appreciated by The Way Life Center. Amen. Just a few more minutes where you can go there, you can donate, and you can give. My, 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 this word has got me so blessed today. It has me so pumped and happy. And I want you to go, and if you will, sow seeds in the ministry. God bless you. Amen. So with that being said, we want to say thank you. Also, we have already launched the, the uh, spring quarter that's coming up in 2021 for our coaches, our coach consortium, the Abundant Life Path Coach um, University, excuse me, the Abundant Life Path University. We've already launched the spring semester where you can start now because the, 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 there's a tuition. But you can go ahead and get Pay it in full or get on a payment plan for the tuition so that when we start the Abundant Life Path University in 2021, you've already got your seat. Uh, I'm telling you now, the spots are going quickly. Many people are coming. Now, you got to understand something. This is not just offered here in the United States, but we have clients and we have, I'm sorry, we have students from the UK, from Africa, from Brazil, from Costa Rica. We have clients from all over the world, Canada, and as well as here in the States. And so it's just not you that's hearing us here on YouTube, but it's the world. And so many people are jumping and having the interviews and they're getting into the class and paying the tuition for the Abundant Life Path University. I want you to get a part of that because we're raising coaches, spiritual coaches that are going out into the world and making a difference. Mm. We, as we say here at the Way Life Center, the spiritual coaches are the new ministers that are being raised up and they're going into the dark places of the world and they're helping people find abundant life. I want you to join today. So a link will be up also at the bottom as well in the description of this video of how to get your spot. Now listen now, the spots are limited. They are going quickly. Okay. I'm telling you, they are going quickly. We've graduated uh, three classes. We did a spring, a uh, winter. And so we did a, a winter, spring, and a summer class. Uh, well, fall class. I'm sorry. We did a spring, summer, and a fall class this year, and I think we write about a hundred students that we've already put out this year. That's a, that's awesome. With others that are coming in, now we, we took the winter off. We're closing out next week by the end of our fall class. And we're taking off the fall or the winter, but spring, February of 2021 is when the spring classes start, and so you want to make sure that you get your spot locked down. If it's just with a down payment and your monthly payments so you can pay the tuition for the Abundant Life, what? The Abundant Life Path University, ALPU. And then some of you say, well, look, when you join that and take care of the classes, you can become part of our millionaire uh, coach consortium where we have coaches from all over the world that come for teaching and guidance. And also they learn from other coaches. All right. So I want you to listen. Ask other, if some of you right now are watching the video and you've taken our course, just let them know how good it is and how much it's blessed you and how much it's helped you to be a better person and a great coach. All right, so I want you to do that. All right, guys, I got to go. But I want you to share this message. If you came in late, as I always love to say, go back and watch it in its entirety. I want you to make sure that you let go of any dead weight that has been holding you from being the abundant life person that God has for you from having the blessings and abundance that run it over that you can share with other people. If you've been holding on to some stuff that has been holding you back, it's your responsibility to release it, to let it go. All right. And then share this message with somebody, you know, go into the share place of it, copy and copy the link of this video and send it to someone, email it or put it on their page and say, listen, you got to hear this video. This man is speaking some life. 
And I'm telling you, I want to share with you because somebody right now just went through this very thing this week and had this very conversation. That's why this word is so real to you right now because you experienced it this week. And God, you told God, I, I know that's better. And there is. There's better when you let go. All right. God bless you. Blessings in abundance. We love you here the Way Life Center on behalf of myself and Rebecca and the entire uh, Way Life Center group. Membership, the, the members were part of us from all over the world. We love you much. Blessings and abundance to you. And you let it go starting right now. God bless you. Love you much. Be blessed.